Uh, Lori uh, earned her associate degree in legal assistance from Columbus State Community College, and she's currently pursuing an MBA at Ohio Dominican. Prior to becoming the clerk, Lori was barely going daily to Judge Brenner and a small business owner. Now, the um, Lori will tell you all about the court. One more comment that uh, Lori used to be a member of the Columbus uh, Downtown Rotary. Please welcome Lori Tiger. Thank you, Abe. So I hope you're not going to be penalized too much for announcing to the group you met me during the campaign season. <laughs> It's all about fines, I know. Um, because the uh, microphone will stretch all the way down to the laptop where my notes are, I'm going to go down and um, give my presentation at the laptop. So let me get here. We'd like you to use it, though. If you can. How far can I go? <laughs> I can go then. Okay. How about moving the laptop? No, that's not the That'll work. That's good. You're a problem. I'm good. I don't like to deal with that. It works. Okay. That does work. They told me it wouldn't stretch this far. So it's wonderful. I just want to say thank you so much for having me with you today. I see so many friendly and wonderful faces out there. People that I know and have known for many years. And it's a nice... Uh, feeling to come back and see you again and uh, be here at the Dublin Worthington Rotary. I used to be a Rotarian and I was always impressed with the work that you do and I hope someday to get back to it. Um, so thank you again for being Rotarians. I'm the Franklin County Municipal Clerk of Court. There are actually two clerks of court in Franklin County. Now you do have something on the table to give you an answer to this question, but who is the other clerk in Franklin County? Mary Ellen O'Shaughnessy. She is the common pleas clerk. She does have a four-year term. I have a six-year term because my term is tied to the municipal judge's term, which is six years. So there's a little bit of information about the difference between the two courts in the brochure that I left on the table. Basically, we do the same kinds of things. We collect court costs and fines, and we disperse them out to the state, uh, the county, the city, and for me, the municipality Franklin County, in Franklin County, which there are 19 different municipalities in Franklin County. So that's where the money goes, where we have to disperse those funds. The mission statement um, was created back in 2006, and the mission is to accurately maintain, safeguard, and store all court documents as well as disperse money. Uh, as directed by legal mandates. Now when I say legal mandates, that means the legislature. The legislature makes a lot of changes and requirements um, very often, and it's difficult to keep up with all of that, but that's part of my job as well. The strategic, uh, the key goals are to process all cases and related actions within case-specific, legally mandated timelines. Our strategic goal is to continue to find ways to improve the operations of the municipal court clerk's office and to cultivate cooperation with, this is a new PowerPoint program, with other governmental agencies, um, which I'll tell you about in a little bit, to better serve all those of those who depend on the clerk's office for accurate record keeping. The Franklin County Municipal Court is one of the largest municipal courts in the whole state of Ohio. We have 15 judges and 6 magistrates. Um, I have 162 employees, which I'll tell you about in a moment. And we're open 24 hours a day, 7 days a week. We always have a judge on call in case someone gets arrested um, or needs a um, search warrant signed. <laughs> Back in 2012, there were over 8,000 environmental cases filed in our court, 53,000 criminal cases filed, 151,708 traffic cases filed, 48,000 plus civil cases, and about 350,000 ancillary cases. Um, those are like writs of, ex writs of ex execution, civil appeals, judgment debtors, civil capious warrants, 
those kinds of things. They are the uh, actions that supplement other actions that are already in place. 2013 operating budget, which uh, still has to be approved by City Council and the Mayor's Office, uh, is 11 million, just a little over 11 million dollars. And as you can see, uh, I have 162 full-time employees for the budgeted strength. Uh, most of the 11 million dollars goes to personnel costs. Um, the actual budget, the proposed budget was 11,381,649. The actual budget was 11 million 500, you know, 500,000 and some change. So, um, if you always wanted to know how much it costs to run the clerk's office, there you go. We received over $45 million in core costs and fines back in 2012. We're expecting a little bit less this year. It's been more difficult to collect those core costs and fines from defendants than uh, in previous years. And also our caseload is down. Uh, as you can see, we have about 56% of our caseload is tied to traffic violations. 25% is tied to civil cases, 16% is tied to criminal cases, and 3% tied to environmental court cases. So what kinds of cases do you think environmental court cases would include? Anybody? Spills. Spills, okay, environmental spills, what else? Air pollution. Air pollution, maybe that's probably in a federal court. Give me another one. Why? Illegal dumping. Illegal dumping, yes. And you hear about those landlords that are sentenced to spend two weeks in their own property for refusing to fix something. You know, you hear about that? Those are environmental cases. You also hear a barking dog, a dangerous animal types cases as well. Um, for our court, we have a lot of Columbus City code violations for building code violations. Maybe the car is set out in front for more than six or eight months and it doesn't run. Someone needs to move that. They can be cited for that. That um, homeowner can be cited. If their lawn is knee high and it's not the 4th of July, then, you know, that person can be cited and uh, charged with a crime. We have eight different divisions in our office. The accounting finance division handles all of the money that comes in, both through the mail, through electronic means, and also from person to person who comes up to our counter. Um, so that online payments, we have uh, seen about $10 million in online payments since we were able to implement a new system back in 2007. So we've seen an increase in the ability, you know, people's ability to pay for that, so we've seen an increase in the demand for that. We are audited annually by a private firm hired by the City of Columbus. This year, last, this year it was Plant and Morgan. Plant and Moran? Plant and Moran? Okay, I took it off of my letterhead that I got from them, but uh, maybe it's Plant and Moran. But um, that's always interesting. They ask for financial information. They take a random sampling of all of our cases. They just pull something off the shelf, take a look at it, make sure that it's in order. Um, we also have uh, programs, several programs in our county finance, time payments, rent escrow, and trusteeship. Time payments are a payment plan that the judge can put a defendant on if they're unable to pay that full amount of the fine, either the day of court or within their um, specified um, timeline that the judge sets. So they have to pay $25 to start their time payments, and at least uh, $50 a month is what we require them to pay until it's paid off. Rent escrow is uh, a program that we run here in Franklin County, but a lot of the smaller courts don't have the ability to do that. If you have a, a landlord-tenant issue, and the tenant um, wants the landlord to pay attention to a specific issue, they can come down to our office, pay their rent into an escrow account. We'll set up mediation between the two parties uh, through magistrates, typically. And uh, when the case is resolved, the rent then goes to the uh, landlord, and they cannot be, that way the tenant cannot be evicted during that time period. So they are paying rent, it's just um, in our escrow account. Trusteeship is uh, an alternative in lieu of bankruptcy. There, anyone that uh, needs to come down to file a trusteeship will file for with our office uh, what the amount owed, the name of the company, and then we allocate so much money per month from their paycheck to pay off that trusteeship. And I 
get thrilled when I get a file uh, in my office to let me know that um, the amount has been paid off in full. So that doesn't happen very often, but it's uh, an alternative to bankruptcy. Criminal Division, as I mentioned, is open is 24 hours a day. Uh, we support law enforcement, the public, and the legal community during the night the evening hours. Uh, if someone gets arrested, what happens is the officer files the complaint or a document uh, filled out describing the revised code or whatever city code has been violated. Uh, we swear them to that complaint personally. And then the defendant is, if they're being arrested, then the defendant is taken down to the jail where they're processed at the jail. To get out of jail, the uh, loved one or uh, friend has to come to our office and they can pay the bond. Um, and then that person, we do all the paperwork and then send it down to the jail so that person is then released. So it benefits us to be open 24 hours a day. Uh, we are down at the OSU football games. We are on site for Ohio um, Highway Patrol sometimes is down there. Um, Sheriff's Office, Columbus Division of Police, and the OSU Patrol. It's a collaboration on many fronts, and it's been very successful. On average, we have about 50 people that are uh, arrested or charged with uh, OBI. It might be um, underage drinking. Um, sometimes I know we've seen a felony come through where someone was selling OSU memorabilia and they didn't have a license. So there are numbers of things that you can be stopped for, uh, ticketed for, or given a license of. A summons to court if you're not arrested. We created an FTP website for law enforcement. That's for subpoenas. We're able to uh, send them a subpoena by email instead of the paper. The paper, as you know, takes a lot longer to get to them through the regular mail. Uh, the FTP website also has all of the cases um, that are current. So if, if a municipality has a warrant out on someone um, and we arrest them, we'll let that agency know so they can pull it from their records. So they're keeping their records up to date by communicating with us through the website. Traffic Violations Bureau, as I mentioned before, we had about 151,000 traffic violations filed last year. We received 65% of our tickets from the Columbus Division of Police. Um, and the Highway Patrol, OSU Police, Port Columbus Police, and, and the municipalities in Franklin County. We are in two different counties, and usually when I speak to the jurors, I ask them this trivia question. What other counties does the city of Columbus go into besides Franklin County? So I've already given you the answer, so I can't ask you that one. But it's uh, Fairfield and Delaware. So Franklin County, um, I have countywide jurisdiction and citywide jurisdiction. Mary Ellen's office is only countywide. Okay. We also handle mayor's court transfers from mayor's courts. Uh, we also have three collection agencies working for us currently to try to collect on those court costs and fines. Uh, if you don't pay within 45 days, we send you a postcard that says, please uh, submit your payment, uh, or there may be a rest warrant, you know, a warrant for your arrest, or um, other issues that <coughs> prevent you from renewing your license or your license plates. So we've been given a number of tools um, to get people's attention so that they'll come down and pay their court costs and fines. The collections division manager also handles all of the surety bond agents and um, the bondsmen, you know, like, um, what, Dog the Bounty Hunter, you know? He, he's, a, he's a bondsman. Dog the Bounty Hunter. So we have um, a number of agents. We require them to register every year with our office. And we work closely with the Ohio Department of Insurance to maintain um, all of our records to make sure that all of them are in compliance. If they're not in compliance, the clerk can tell them that they can't write any more bonds in the court. Uh, we have had that happen a couple of times, and when I say not in compliance, I mean the defendant didn't show up for court. That's what they're hired to do, make sure the defendant shows up in court and pay the 10%, usually it's 10% um, of the bond, if the defendant doesn't show up, the bondsman either has to provide the rest of the money that's due or they have to go find the defendant and bring him in. So when they don't do that, oftentimes they'll go to the court and they'll say, can I have another month to find this defendant? Typically the court will say yes and they'll give them an extension. If they don't find the defendant and they don't pay the rest of the bond, I can cut them off. They can't write any more bonds in my court, which means no business. 
So that's happened a few times, but not often. Usually they're pretty good. The civil division um, is a fairly large division. It's only open 8 to 5 Monday through Friday. But we handle a number of different types of um, filings. I'll let you read those. Garnishments are usually huge. When we see the economy get worse, we have a, a huge fluctuation of garnishments. Um, we had so many being filed at once uh, a couple years ago that we told the companies they could only bring in one copy box full a week. They were bringing in tons every day. We couldn't keep up. They are time sensitive, so we've got to make sure that we have um, the garnishments filed and uh, everything is in order. Back in uh, 2006, I created a quality control division. I realized early on that we're not perfect, we're human, but that there are ways we can, things we can do to track our work, to make sure that what we're doing is as accurate as possible. Um, and back in 2006, we had a review of over 15,000 criminal cases that had mistakes on them, and uh, traffic cases that includes traffic cases, and over 11,000 civil cases that needed reviewed and mistakes corrected on those. So by doing a daily report, we can stay ahead of that. It could be a training issue for that individual employee. Um, it could be some other issue, but we're able to see that right away instead of letting it go on. Um, they assist us with audits. They uh, were in charge of the feasibility study for electronic filing. And uh, as you can, as you probably have heard, a lot of the courts are going to electronic filing instead of that, having that paper. Uh, eventually, we'll get there. I would say within the next three years, we'll have electronic filing. It's going to be a lot easier to maintain the files if the thing, you know, the files and the copies of uh, complaints and documents are electronically sent to us. We can just attach that copy to the case file. Um, electronically, and then we don't have to manually find the file, make sure all the documents get inserted before the court date. The Office of Information Services is also on call 24 hours a day. I have a total of seven employees, and Hanny is one of them. He's here today to help me with my uh, technology needs. In 2011, we actually reduced our carbon footprint by 50% by replacing old servers with a Blade server, same. Um, we also uh, collaborated with Ohio Courts Network, which is part of the Supreme Court, to upload all of our data into their database so that all law enforcement officers and other courts statewide could see our records. So when someone's in front of a, a court, maybe in uh, another municipality or a common police court, they can look up on the OCN, Ohio Courts Network, and see what other cases that person has been convicted of, what other charges. We have a number of green initiatives that we, fi uh, that we follow, including um, purchasing recycled paper for copies, um, recycled paper for full file folders, and also refurb refurbished toner cartridges. Uh, it's not a huge savings, but it is one of the green initiatives that the county has asked us to uh, participate in. Technological advancements. Uh, as you can tell, by reducing our footprint by 50%, we've had a number of technological advancements. Uh, in 2005, when I just before I took office, the office was in contract with a company called 3SG, and they do imaging. They removed 13,000 boxes from our court building, and we had them stuck in every nook and cranny. These cases went back to 1992. That's all that we had. We didn't have microfilm before that, and Common Police has microfilm back to the beginning of time, I know. <laughs> but uh, so we had them remove all the boxes, and now we have over 40 million documents on file electronically. Currently, our case uh, cases are scanned and imaged at the close of that case or at the final part of it, and uh, then we're able to shred or destroy that hard copy. The Supreme Court actually. Um, regulates how long we have to keep documents. So I have a, for another trivia question. OVIs are drunk driving. How long do you think we have to keep drunk driving cases? Forever. Not forever. Ten years. Ten years. Fifty years. Fifty years. Where in the world am I going to keep paper for fifty years, right? So one of the things that has recently happened in the Supreme Court is they've approved the electronic copies of documents as being acceptable medium to store that information. So that was huge, because if you can imagine 13,000 boxes 
back to 92, 50 years from now, how many boxes would I have? Yeah. Yeah. Uh, with that, I'll open up the floor to any questions, and I welcome anything you uh, would like to know. I have a question. The, the red light cameras, is that, a lot of that, is that in the traffic, the violations? The red light cameras, are those in traffic violations? Actually, no. The uh, red light cameras are owned by a company out of Arizona. And whenever you get that ticket in the mail, you pay them directly, then they send to the city of Columbus or whatever municipality has contracted with them a portion of the money that you send. We do handle red light photo, red, photo red light uh, ticket appeals. The catch is, these are civil appeals. So they have to be filed in civil division. $112 for the filing fee, plus the $95 you have to pay for the ticket. If you win, you get the $112 back. If you lose, you get nothing back. We haven't had anybody win. There are probably only half dozen or more that have ever been filed. Yes? How many reverses and receive your bond of 10%? How many recognizance do you have? Uh, I couldn't give you. How, how many recognizance bonds do you, do you have and how much money? And, well, yeah, the, 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 and how much the, are, do you make off of the 10%? What's the total income of you? What's the total income of the 10%? So we return 90% of the 10% when the defendant shows up in court on the assigned court date. The rest of that money goes to, um, I think it's a public defender's fee that goes to the state. Um, those kinds of things, we have different court costs that have come out of that bond money. But what's the total back. revenue? To we don't have it separated out. I do have an annual report. I don't know who has it. Oh, it's right there in front of you. Uh, I may have that information in there. I'll, I'll look with you in a little bit. How much? Not, not, a, not very much, really. Because we give it back um, to the defendant if they show up. The other issue that we have is the bondsmen are accountable for not for the defendant not showing up or showing up. If a loved one comes in, they have to sign a contract with our office that says they will bring the defendant in or have to pay the rest of the bond. So we've had like people you know, mortgage their house to pay the bond. And unfortunately, they're on the hook for the rest of the money unless that person shows up for court. We started turning those over to collection agencies and about $80,000 the first year was collected. Um, but, you know, most of the time I'll go before the court and ask the court to set it aside, and it will. What percentage of uh, recognizance do you compare to the fees? What percentage of recognizance? Um, those recall bonds are set by the judges. I would say a very small percent, probably 10%. Yes? Recently, as everyone knows, in major headlines across the country, Florida, a Florida court of courts uh, received forged documents from two very astute uh, life, kind of lifers in prison and were free after saying that they only had to were on sentence for 15 years. What safeguards should we have here in our county to prevent that from happening? The question is what safeguards should we have in place here in Franklin County to prevent um, someone from fraudulent, filing fraudulent documents in our court, being released from jail or prison or whatever the situation, like in Florida, that right. occurred. Right. Uh, you know, as the clerk, we have to take anything anybody files with us, whether it's on a paper napkin, a trash bag, anything. We have to take it across the counter and file it. If the judge decides to allow the filing, that's a different story. So it would depend on our, our office to make sure that all the information is correct on that entry, and also would depend on the judge um, to follow up to make sure that information is correct. So does the judge in Franklin County, uh, does he or she approve that or the clerk's approve? The clerk does not approve the filing? No, no, not the filing, but let's say the part, the part in Florida where the sentence had been reduced. The sen okay, the part in Florida where the sentence had been reduced, I'm not familiar with how the process flowed in the clerk or the court's office. Um, but typically the judge has to sign off on it. Okay, the clerk does not sign off. Okay, clerk does not sign off on that here. <laughs> yes. Can you talk a little bit about the mediation program and uh, what services they, is that in your own? We have small claims court 
um, in our office. About 10,000 cases are filed annually. And I think of small claims as like the Judge Judy shows you see on television where they come up and some crazy thing happened and they're fighting about it. Um, it's amazing that those are, a lot of those are real cases. They come to my office and they research our cases and pull them off the shelf and, and invite them to come be on television. I met somebody once who did it. Uh, but the mediation program is very successful. I would say about 80% success rate for small claims court cases. And they're very proud of that. Um, they have a, a mediation program that's very strong with magistrates being the mediators. Well, maybe they haven't told you, but they have told attorneys that they'll take any case, they'll, they'll accept any pre-litigation case regardless of the jurisdictional amounts, and not just small claims cases. Um, so you could bring essentially any dispute, business dispute, or anything out there. If they've got time, they're, they'll help you mediate those. Yes, it is a service, and I don't believe there's a cost to the mediation, which is wonderful. The other thing that our court has done, we're very progressive in our court. We actually have several specialty courts. We have a catch court, which is a prostitution court. Women who are convicted of, of uh, prostitution can come in. Um, the judge and the group has to approve of them being uh, part of the, uh, the group. And they have kind of a peer group setting with the judge sitting up there. It's a very small group, two-year program before they can graduate from the program. Um, judge Herbert heads that one up. It's amazing to see the pictures. He has a wonderful presentation. So see the pictures of the women who are on drugs and who are in really bad shape in the beginning of the program. By the end of the program, they look totally different. It's called catch. Catch court. I don't remember what it stands for. Drug Court also, and uh, Veterans Court, which is our newest program, began uh, about a year ago. And basically veterans who uh, fall into the cycle of the court system and they need help, we have different um, programs that are out there that we try to hook them up with for housing, um, and maybe employment, um, some of their needs, so we can make sure their needs get met. Mental health court. And we have a mental health court. Judge Vandekar runs that one, and the veterans court. I couldn't think of the last one. Thank you. Anybody else have any questions? All right, one more question. Okay. Yes. Um, during the presentation, you mentioned that your caseload is down this year. Yes. Um, comparison to last year and the year before. Um, is there a good thing happening that's causing that? Or? During the presentation, I mentioned that the caseload is down. Is that a good thing if you're comparing it to last year and the previous years? Um, yes and no. Um, Richard Cordray is now the Federal Consumer Protection Bureau, and he has really um, made it more difficult for banks to loan money to people that can't pay that loan back. We had a lot of contract cases filed. Origi uh, normally, we have a lot of contract cases where Banks have to pursue that individual for foreclosure or any other actions like that. Um, the documentation doesn't make it into the file from the bank. The attorney files it, but all the documentation isn't there. So it ends up being this big runaround that the person ends up doing. But uh, Richard Cordray has cut back on a lot of that. So we're seeing, I think we saw 22% drop in contract cases from last year, this time. I just ran the report yesterday. Uh, traffic cases are down about 3%. Um, criminal cases are down a little bit. Um, small claims court cases look really good. They haven't, I think it was zero, which means it's, it's equivalent or less because of the mediation programs. They're able to finish those cases rather quickly. Thank you so much for having us. recognition of that. Our club is now going to donate a book to one of the schools that will be tutoring and it will be in your hands. Perfect. Thank, Thank you. you. Thank you. Yes.